favorite, the members of the clergy, the BBC, um, and all protocols of that, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon once again. My name is Moffat, um, and I stand here this afternoon um, on behalf of the Kenya Counseling and Psychologist Association, um, where I am part of the leadership as the CEO. And I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, St. Paul University and all the people who have made this um, occasion take place. I do not intend to keep us for long. I have been blessed by the speeches uh, which have gone here ahead of me. And uh, I only have something very little to share with us. And I want to begin by saying that mental uh, health, as it has been defined here, it is a state of well-being. Uh, by the way, I'm also a trained counselor and a psychologist. And I have also been lecturing at the Pan-African Christian University. So I am therefore feeling so blessed and I feel at home uh, when I am here. It is a state of uh, mental well-being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make contributions to his or her community. Now, mental health includes our emotional, psychological, and the social well-being. It affects the way we think. It affects the way we feel and the way we act, as we have been told. It also helps uh, to determine how we handle stress, relate to others, and also make choices. Mental health is important at every stage of life, from childhood to adolescence through adulthood. Therefore, as I stand before you, I do a lot of uh, speaking to corporates and uh, uh, also churches and all that. And one of the things that I have been saying that we need to be very cautious about today is the fact that uh, uh, maybe because of the various factors, we have a society, our families are producing a society that is not resilient enough. And uh, that coupled with the fact that uh, we are living in a technological age, uh, our problems, our psychological problems, uh, continues to be compounded by the fact that, uh, uh, for instance, our young people, the moment we go to our phones, uh, somebody was telling me, uh, I have gone to this application for launching a book where a young man had written a book on suicide calling it uh, Deception Behind Suicide. And it is a very beautiful book. And uh, I remember I was uh, uh, telling young people there that it is important for us to come to a point where we are able to embrace change, we are able to embrace uh, you know, the realities of life, frustrations that we go through. And I usually do this by taking us around a circle that I have developed that I call the frustration circle. And the frustration circle talks about us being frustrated. Because in this life, we cannot run away from frustrations, true or false. We have to be frustrated in one way or the other. And then, when I was listening to this uh, play that just happened, I thank God that it took place before I spoke, um, it made me think about the way we get frustrated, like we saw uh, this a lady getting frustrated, going to the pastor, going to the traditional healer, and uh, being given a lot of solutions to her problems. But then, we have a generation, or we are having a society uh, that has not been able to know the importance of embracing the futilities of life. And then that has been also coupled by the fact that we are living at a time when we are having a uh, 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 you know, religious teachings that are not biblically sound. And uh, for this reason, we are living at a time when we have been told uh, that it is not good to suffer. You know, suffering is not your portion. You will be blessed. You will drive a big car. You know those big cars with the dimples? Do you know them? Have you ever seen them? You know those big cars? And they are good. I'm also trusting God for one. 
But then, the moment when we encounter challenges, because life has a way of throwing at us things that we cannot hack, true or false. Are you with me? And therefore, when we are not able to change our situation, because when frustration gets inside of us, the first thing that happens, and this is the normal reaction, the natural reaction of every human being, is that we want to change that particular situation. But the question is, is that every situation in our lives we are able to change? Are we able to reverse every situation that happens to us? It is not possible. We have seen young men who do not know how to take no for an answer. Are you with me? Men, where are you? Uh, you know, I'm happy because I'm speaking to a majority of uh, university students. And we are having a breed of young people who, do not, who are not resilient enough to take no for an answer. Are you with me? That when somebody is being told, has been told a no, even a no by a girl or by a young man, they take a machete, they travel all the way from Nairobi to Eldoret to go and kill. Have you seen such, a, such, such things? That is what we are talking about. Now, if a no has come, I am a marriage and family therapist. And every time I am working with couples, and some people have come to me, oh, she has said, my wife has said that she wants to be Muslim. And she has come with a letter from the lawyer, from the court. And they want me to sign it. I cannot take it. The question is, can you force somebody to love you? Are you with me? And when we are not able to take that no for an answer, what usually happens is the genesis of mental illness. Because what we are doing is that we are trying to open a door which has already closed is the way for us. Are you with me? And the moment frustration cannot exit from the door of change, it continues to trouble you. And usually what happens when we are fighting to open this door which has closed for us, the next door, available door, is the door that we call the door of embracing utilities of life, which is a very healthy door. It is a God who has it is God who has given us that door. And this door should always remain open. Are you with me? It should always remain open. But many times when we are fighting to have that change, to open a door that has closed for us, or to try to close a door that has opened for us, then it goes without saying that we have erected a door where a door is not supposed to be placed. And this is the place where that we call embracing the utilities of life. Now, if you have put a door there, the only remaining door is a door that we call a door of aggression and a door of fight. This is where we begin to have unhealthy ways of coping. This is where we have depression, because depression is us trying to open a door that has opened, uh, that has closed for us. So, fighting, and in its worst form, this is where we have people committing suicide. Because the pain is so overwhelming, that we are not able to take it anymore. And therefore, we need to keep that door open. So mental health awareness, therefore, involves educating the public. And I really want to, uh, to applaud St. Paul University and all the partners for what you are doing. Educating the public about mental health in order to reduce the stigma attached to mental illness and to encourage people who are struggling with mental health problems to seek help. And it is against this backdrop that KCPA would want to go out and partner with the people around here, partner with our county government, partner with the national government, so that we can actually come in and bring the aspect of professionalism, even as you train your uh, community health volunteers, we would want to be uh, working with you as well. Partnership with the religious institutions to train para counselors. I thank God because I have heard that being mentioned. And as a matter of fact, KCPA, we have developed a curriculum where we want to train our church members so that they can also ease the burden from our priests, from our pastors, and they are able to respond to some of these issues. 
that they do not have to go to the university to train, but we have an old lady there, an old man there, but they can be equipped with the skills. This is what we are trying to do, and we have already uh, you know, developed that curriculum so that we can be able to help our, 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 our church members in mosques and every religious uh, institution. And as I talk about this, I am reminded of, uh, of a couple that lost a child in a, in a certain church. And then, you know, people respond and they go to visit and they go to encourage. And you know, many times, and especially for people who are not trained on how to respond to loss and grief, many times we are fond of thinking that we need to talk. Are you with me? As you get a pal, as we wonge, as we wonge, so that the people can feel consoled. And then somebody uh, made a fatal mistake of uh, telling this young couple, you know, you are just young, and uh, the Lord will give you another child, you will have another one. And I'm like, even if this couple got 10 more children, none of them can never replace the one who went. Are you with me? And therefore, these are some of the responses that sometimes we give, and uh, they do more harm than good. And as a matter of fact, I was told that that young couple felt so hurt, they felt so offended, that they even left that church. They left wounded. Are you with me? Because, are you with me? So it is for this reason that we have developed that curriculum, so that we can train those para counselors in you know, church based. And I thank God because we are having our county representatives here. Because KCPA, we have segmented ourselves into counties. And we have the officials here. And we are able to organize that and train uh, your members. And therefore, you can always talk to us.